The asylum seekers are angry. Last Friday night, about 30 of them stormed the villa of their people smuggler in Java, demanding he take them to Australia by boat or give their money back. News Corp Australia was watching. Each day for 20 days, the smugglers have promised they will travel that night, but each day has brought disappointment for the passengers. When they get to the smuggler's villa in Chisarua, West Java, the boss smuggler and his deputy are not there, but four of his agents are. Some punches are thrown and people are screaming at the agents. They move to the villa next door to talk. Then this man, the boss smuggler, a Syrian named Abu Vasim, turns up to deal with the situation. He has been selling journeys to Australia for four years. Somehow, he has never been caught. Nor has his deputy, an Iraqi man named Morteza. Vasim promises they will leave within three days. He tells them they have to trust him. Eventually, the asylum seekers disperse, defeated. The smugglers keep their money and hold their hopes. There's nothing they can do but wait. Vasim and his men return to their villa to discuss their options. They can either find a boat or steal the passengers' money. In the same city, an Afghan woman, Nazreen, weeps. Her husband left by boat for Australia two years ago, but she won't take a boat. She wants her son and two daughters to come to Australia as proper refugees but she hasn't heard from the United Nations High Commission for Refugees since she registered with them last October. She is losing hope. And this man, Muhammad Ali Halawli, from Somalia, explains why sometimes people feel they have no choice but to take the boats. The case, the problem is there's no process here in, in Jakarta. That's why everyone goes to go by boat.